from Rose City RV in Michigan. Today we're at our Tawas location. I just want to tell you a little bit about the new um, 12,000 ROK or 12,000 Rock Viking um, that just came out um, for this 2024 season. Um, really cool little unit. Uh, it's got a lot of benefits and features I'd like to go over with you today. Um, there's really nothing like this on the market. There's teardrops, there's large travel trailers. But this kind of fits right in the middle for that small SUV buyer. So let's get into that. So we'll start here with the outside kitchen first because that's kind of what the ROK stands for, the rear outdoor kitchen. And that really is what this unit features. Most times when you're camping, you spend most of your time outside. Um, with that being said, they do a really nice job on this outside kitchen on a small unit. First, you notice you got the small sink here. Um, you're going to have this quick detachable sink here that works like so. Um, you can take a shower from there with a shower port if you'd like, um, which is nice. You can wash your hands, do the dishes, whatever you need to do. It's kind of multi-purpose. Cooktop here, a little two burner. Um, not a whole lot special with that, but it provides you that cooking access if you don't want to use the nice flat top that they provide. Um, microwave, it's kind of nice if you do have power and you're able to heat some things up. Um, flat top cooktop comes with it. Everything you see here comes stock on the unit. Uh, 12 volt refrigerator, um, so that can be operated off grid. Or if you're trying to conserve power, you can turn that to the off position. Moving on to the side profile, there's a couple features I want to share with you guys. Starting with the LED. side propane port located here that uses the onboard propane tank for any additional propane accessories you might want to bring along. We've also got 15 inch steel rims here with a larger off-road tire and a larger wheel well that you are able to stand on if you need to access the roof. So that's a nice feature. Also we have this black power awning. Typically with a unit this small you're not going to get an awning let alone a power one. And it's full length extra corkscrew or hook the, the leash, find a tree to hook the leash up to, you can hook it right up there. Starting inside here, we've got the nice full-size bed here. Underneath of there, you have some uh, good storage area, more storage than you have in larger travel trailers, actually. There's four drawers here, two compartments over there, and you've got this whole floor space here if you want to put a dog kennel or luggage bags or whatever you may need. On the wall over here, um, we have the awning switch. This is a power awning, which is nice. Uh, small trailer, but full length awning, so that's a plus. Viking went with this 110 uh, Suburban Furnace, and a common question I've had uh, about this furnace is, why not put the 12 volt propane furnace in here? Um, this furnace allowed them to keep the cost down on this unit alone, but also, you know, if you run a furnace in here for any length of time, it will make it extremely hot in a short amount of time. So I think this is a better option. Uh, most of the time, I would not suspect you need a furnace in this small trailer. A couple bodies will give enough feed to use probably to keep most people warm. Coming over here, you got some more storage located under here. Uh, 110 outlets, charging centers, 12 volt. You can use these off grid, which is very nice. Solar controllers located here. This unit does have solar already equipped on the roof. Um, a small unit like this, a couple batteries, you'd be able to go quite a few days without needing any power. Um, 110 air conditioning, so the times that are ridiculously hot, you do have that available to you when you have power for that. So that's a plus. You've got a nice little pull out here that turns into a bed um, or as a couch. It's in the couch position now. You just pull it out to turn it into a bed with some storage underneath. 
We have a max fan located here. These these fans right here um, push more air than the traditional fan. And if you ask me, is a it's almost a better replacement for an air conditioner, especially if you're interested in boondock camping. Um, you can really move a lot of air with just that 12 volt fan. More storage located here, and then you have. Um, the cassette toilet located here, and that does pull out um, for changing the tank, dumping the tank. This is more designed for middle of the night stuff, so at least you have some sort of toilet if need be. Because I know a lot of people don't like to go without the toilet there. One ten outlets throughout the whole coach as well. Um, you know, as small as it is, you have three here just within the reach. So. Um, that's kind of it for the inside. It's not real big. Moving on to our driver's side or what we call the off-door side in the RV business. This just means the opposite side of the entry door of the RV. Typically, this is where you have all your hookups, uh, your electrical hookups, your water hookups, and same thing on your campsite. This is where your water spigot will be or your 30 amp or 50 amp service post will be. So at the top here, we have a solar port. That's what we call solar on the side. That's for additional solar. Let's say you parked underneath of a tree and you need to get some sunlight for your solar. So you use a, a backpack or a suitcase solar as they refer to them and you kind of move that around in the sun throughout the day to help recharge your batteries. That's where that will hook up. Underneath of here you have a cable hookup. If you have a campground that offers you cable, that's where you'll hook it up. That feeds the inside ports if you put a TV in there. This is the freshwater fill. When you take this cap off and you put the hose in there, that's going to fill the onboard tank on the RV. So if the campground does not offer you a water spigot, that's where you'll fill up the tank. If they do offer you the spigot, you will hook it up here on the city water connection fill up. And then this is going to be your power hookup. So this is a 30 amp service um, and it only needs 30 amp because it's a smaller RV with a smaller air conditioner. Um, and microwave. But if you are going to power those two items, you definitely want to have 30 amp service. This is going to be the antifreeze inlet. We're not going to go over that today on today's video because we don't want to think about winter time. This is going to be the gray port, as one would call it. The gray tank is going to be either that or the galley tank people refer to it as, and that's going to be like your shower water, your sink water. Um, those kinds of things, everything but the black tank or the fresh water. Black tank being the toilet water, this RV does not have that. So, this does not have what we would refer to as the gray or the galley, so the water is just going to come right out of this port. You can hook up a hose, drain it somewhere else, drain it into an additional tank if you wanted to, or just let it go right on the ground there. And then last but not least, we have the water located water heater located right here. This is going to be a six gallon gas water heater. So that's going to be functioned by the propane on board. Pretty simple, um, basic function. They've been using these in RVs for at least the last 60 to 80 years, I would say. Manual stabilizer located under here. You're going to have an additional one over there. Um, and then a freshwater drain system right here. If you pull that, the little bit of plumbing that is in here, that's where the low point is and it'll drain down. Solar hookups um, for the panel that's on the roof are here. These connectors are universal across the solar platform. So if you want to add an additional, you actually could up there. There's a little bit of room left to put, put one up there. This is the new on-the-go ladder system by Lippert. That's really been an improvement across the RV ladder um, that they traditionally offered. This one allows you to get that angle instead of going straight up and down, which we really like and the customer seems to enjoy a lot more. They put the uh, air conditioner that sticks out here inside of this metal container, so if something smacks it driving down the road, bird, whatever, um, at least you won't damage your air conditioner inside of there.